Okay, now remember, where was I going? What, what question was I trying to answer? I was interested in forces, right? Now I've got velocity, I've got acceleration. How do I get from all this to forces? What extra needs to be included? Yeah, very good. All I need is mass, right? So I'm going to now, I've differentiated once, differentiated twice. Now if I include mass in our expressions, that'll get me forces, right? That'll get me forces. Okay, so <clears throat> for this guy over here, right? This is, by the way, this is um, the acceleration for x, and this guy over here is the acceleration for y, okay? Just as we just said, the force, so I've got a horizontal force, it's just this with mass included, right? All I had to do was multiply by mass. So that gives you this. And the same guy over here, if I'm thinking about the forces acting vertically, I'm going to have um, minus m r omega squared sine theta. Lovely. Okay. So, got my values there. So far, so good. Okay. Now, again, I'm going to keep on asking questions. What's interesting that I can do with these? Now, if you recall, when we talked um, earlier about objects, they're moving around and around and around. Uh, they are not experiencing uh, uniform straight line motion. There is actually a force acting on this, and that's what causes it to keep on curving around and around and around. Do you remember that? You've got your diagram in front of you, right? So therefore, if it keeps curving back towards the center, back towards the center, that means there must be a force that is acting toward the center all the time, right? And we said before, there are examples of like gravity or tension in string or whatever kind of other force that's pulling you to the middle, okay? We call that centripetal force because it's towards the center. That's what centripetal means, okay? So if you think about that, I'm um, running out of air, this will do, okay? If you think about this situation, what that means is if you are drawing toward the center, right, toward the center, you have a resultant force acting along this line, okay? Now keep in, keep in mind, this is a tangent, right? This is a tangent. So this line here, this axis I've just introduced, what is that? It's the normal, because it's perpendicular to the tangent, right? This is the normal. So what I'm interested in now is, I know there's a force acting in this direction. Because it's um, oriented along the normal, this is often called the normal force. So I want to know what this normal force is, okay? Um, see, think of this just like with projectile motion, when you took like a horizontal and a vertical component and you can jam them together and make that, oh, this is the velocity, the initial velocity of projection, right? So I'm gonna include those. So I wanna do the same thing here, but it gets a bit confusing thinking about things because this diagram at the moment is operating up, down, left, right, okay? But I wanna think about the normal as my new up, down, left, right. Okay, so I'm going to redraw this diagram. I'd like you to do the same. Uh, you can kind of turn your page, but I think it's easier if you draw a whole new one so that we can think of the normal. This is our real axis now that we're thinking about. Okay, so effectively for this particular diagram, I'm basically going to redraw it rotated 45 degrees this way. Okay, so my axis is going to look like this. All right, now these, are, these horizontal and vertical forces, I already had them on this diagram. Where are they going to be on this new diagram that's just oriented a little bit differently? Which way, for example, is the horizontal force going to be facing? Could you describe it verbally? Yeah, it's going to be heading off, heading off to the top right. You see that? It has to be parallel to this guy, because this, of course, is the x-axis. So that's why the x-force is heading off that way. Okay? So here's f of x. And in the same way, you're going to have this guy which is f of y, okay? Now you can literally see, right? Each of these is contributing, I'm actually gonna make this a bit shorter. Each of these is contributing part of their force towards this direction, right? You see that? So therefore, I'll just put this in a bit closer. What I need to do is resolve forces with regard to the normal, okay? I'm trying to resolve the normal force, that's what I'm doing, okay? So in order to do that, I need a little bit of extra information on my diagram. Firstly, I need to know where I am, which is defined by the angle. So if this is theta over here, you can see you've got some parallel lines happening, right? So theta is also up here. Do you agree with that? That's just corresponding angles, okay? Now to work out how much, for instance, let's just think about this guy over here, the x one, right? There's a triangle in here, like that, right, which is right angle. 
and part of this horizontal force is contributing this amount to the normal force. Do you see that? This is just like with projectile motion. Okay. So if theta is up here, I'm going to redraw myself a new diagram like this. It's just this triangle just by itself. Right? You've got the normal headed up in this direction, and then you've got the horizontal force, which we're now looking at at an angle. You've got a right angle, theta, and that's that magnitude there. Okay? So what I'm really interested in is this quantity. This quantity. Okay? So have a look, using it's a right angle triangle, what trigonometric ratio is going to link this with this? Cos theta is going to be this quantity adjacent on hypotenuse. Right? So if I call this, let's just call it like n for normal. Um, related to x, right? So if I call this guy and x, right? Cos theta, right here. Cos theta is going to be adjacent on hypotenuse, right? And so you can clearly see what is this? It's just going to be f x cos theta. Is that okay? You see how I've done that? You see how I've just reasoned it geometrically? I can do exactly the same thing for the vertical force, right? It's just a little, there's just one more step of geometry that's required, okay? Having a look at that guy, right? I'm going to, again, redraw this diagram. There's a vertical um, force going off in this direction, and that's its magnitude, right? I have this line that joins me to the normal force over here, okay? Now, coming back to this original diagram, how do I work out where theta is? Because I, I want this all in terms of theta. Yeah, so where is theta? Now, you can kind of see, because these two forces are perpendicular to each other, right? this guy in here must be pi on 2 minus theta. Do you agree with that? It's the complement, which makes, if that's pi on 2 minus theta, this guy over here must be theta. Do you see that? So I'm going to put theta here, right? And here is the normal force that comes from the vertical component, right? So that's, I'm going to call that my. What ratio combines these two? Sine. Uh, opposite on hypotenuse. So you can clearly see here, if I want to know what's the amount contributed to the normal force, it's going to be f of y sine theta. So you can see that nice pleasing symmetry to it. Okay, okay so where are we up to? Right, we're now trying to work out, well, the whole amount of force going in that direction. Now, can anyone suggest to me, why have I defined that as positive, even though actually we already know the force should be heading in this direction? Any suggestions? Because if it goes that way, then the thing would not be a circle, but then it would, like, it would go towards the centre. Okay, hold on a second. It is going towards the centre. That's what makes it a circle, right? If it weren't, like, constantly turning in this way, that's toward the centre of the circle, it's going to be turning out that way, which is it's just going to fly off, right? Nothing's bringing it but back to the centre. You need to balance it back up, like, because it's not... Like it's not spiraling okay, maybe I've, I've framed the question a bit unclearly. I'm just trying to think about why have I defined this as positive? Like, I can define this as positive or that as positive. Why have I chosen this as the direction for positive, even though the force that I know actually is acting in that direction, it must be toward the centre? Is it because you're trying to find the magnitude? I'm actually not just trying to find the magnitude. This is all in terms of, like, these guys. I haven't said absolute value anywhere, so sign is still preserved. Jinsu. No, no, it doesn't. No, it doesn't. But you should know why. You should know why. And there's a very obvious reason. It's a very obvious reason, right? Um, what's this point here? It's the origin. Right? It's zero, zero. So as you get larger and larger values, your numbers are getting bigger, right? That way. So it doesn't make sense to call that positive. Like, who would say, oh, yeah, here's the x-axis, by the way. That's negative. Like, that's confusing, right? Don't, don't make things get bigger as they get close to the origin. Things should get bigger as they get away from the origin. So that's why we've defined that way, that direction. Okay? So now if I combine these two together, I'm going to call this Fn, the normal force. Okay, the normal force. What I need to combine is these two guys here, right? The normal force that comes from the horizontal component and the normal force that comes from the vertical component. Does that make sense? So I'm just going to add these. I'm just going to add them. f of x cos theta plus f y sine theta. Okay. By the way, that was my answer to the question of why these guys here are facing in those directions. It's because they want to match with the normal force. Okay. So in case you were wondering before. Okay. What's f, f x again? What's what's that force? Minus. It, it's it's right here. 
is it? It's this guy over here. So therefore, let's put this guy over here. I will just fit it here. When I multiply that horizontal force by cos theta, I'm going to get minus m r omega squared cos squared. And then I take the vertical force and I say it's minus m r omega squared. Aha. Uh -huh. Right? This is, this is in brackets, by the way. Okay, so you can see I can clearly take out a factor of uh, negative mr omega squared. I get left with cos squared plus sine squared, which of course is one. So this normal force, right, is just minus mr omega squared. Please put a big colorful box around that. It's a really important statement, okay? And it's kind of lovely because we were dealing with all these angles and that kind of thing. But we said all along, right, this is meant to be uniform circular motion, like an object moving under the force of gravity, okay? Well, this is the force acting along the normal. Number one, tell me why it's negative. Because if we define positive as away from the origin, we know the normal force is actually toward the origin. It's a centripetal force, right? So therefore, it's, it's negative. Um, obviously, the mass is important. The radius of your motion is important. Then you've got omega. And there's no thetas involved. Why aren't there any thetas? The same because you're experiencing the same motion, sorry, the same force, always back to the center. I don't care where you are on the circle, it doesn't matter, right? It's not relevant, that's why it, it factors out. Does that make sense? Yeah. 